So this is an introduction video to the Multiversal Iridian Rotational Calendar System, or Mercutio, whereas the standard Western calendar is a lunar solar, counting 52 weeks of uh, seven diurnal periods each, simultaneously creating an annual market for new calendars. Other civilizations, including Discordians and their ilk, have uh, used calendars which count five diurnal periods as a week instead. So be it resolved that the following holds true for the space-time being, and until it ceases to be the case, we may as well use it for good effect and redouble our efforts to persuade some of the number freaks to stick apart with their own prime fetishes. The particular number to keep in mind is 91, the length of one quarter year by the seven diurnal period cycle. The 91 is a product of two primes, 7 and 13, and uh, 364 equals 2 squared times 7 times 13. The missing diurnal periods in the year are made up annually without anyone noticing, except A, it takes several years for the same day in terms of day a week to actual diurnal period by number to occur. For example, Monday the 1st of January. B, the leap year day is a result of a remainder to the annual cycle of diurnal periods. In terms of the actual space-time, the planet moves no further in its orbit for the extra day, but in fact spins ahead of its calendrical, i.e. orbital position, while the humanitangs take turns sleeping. Richard P. Feynman once asked, why track multiples of 91? Perhaps in jest. But here's one reason to do it, combined with factors of 5. 1 plus 90 plus 1 plus 90 plus 1 plus 90 plus 1 plus 90 plus 1 equals 365. Or 491s plus 1 or 5 plus 490s. But wait, there's more because 1 plus 90 plus 1 plus 90 plus 1 plus 90 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 equals 1461. Or 5 plus 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 91s. Why track multiples of 91s? Because they're useful for catching remainders in some circumstances, and humans on average sleep that many times in four complete orbits. Some astronomical measurements use a modified Julian date in which relies on the same set of factors but uses a single product to do it. One Julian century equals 36,525 diurnal periods equals 100 orbits. Mercutio splits the difference by considering the long count of four orbits, at which point it calls attention to the fact that February 29th sends the zero point and nothing more. Each diurnal period is quite distinct from every other over the space of four orbits, depending on how precisely the Earth's position in its orbit is measured, and a side result is the calendar never need follow to step in terms of unique identifiers for diurnal period of the week. So here's the first last calendar you didn't have to buy, a five square staff to the not quite hundredth note which the regular year measures. And, and that's, that's why it's real funny. funny. It, it takes the score to call it the determinist absolutist holographic universalist out by showing, showing how the perfect, perfect calendars, calendars existed, existed for years. years. But who needs a calendar or a light bulb or a pair of shoes that has too long a half-life? 1,461 times 5? Use your own damn calculator. Hint! It's 73 times 100 plus 5 equals one-fifth of a Julian century. Oh, also, you may be wondering, what does one do with all these plus 5 diurnal periods? At least traditionally speaking, it's considered normative uh, to periodically hold five-day festivals synchronized with religious or cultural calendars. The Egyptians did it to move from a 360 to 365 day system. The Mayans did it. The French even tried it when they adopted a two times five decimal revolutionary calendar and decimalized clock. Uh, <clears throat> oh, one last feature. The long count year is divisible by three, resulting in 487 uh, per division. That's diurnal periods. Mighty close to a Martian orbital period, n'est-ce pas? basically plus 40 days or one-third of one-third of an Earth orbital period.